Hello, dear students. So in this, I mean, uh, audio, I will try to, I mean, explain the remainder of the uh, file that is dealing with phonetics. And I think that we stopped at, uh, I mean, double articulation. Now we'll be considering features and natural classes. So I'm uh, basically starting, I mean, considering uh, page uh, 28 in the book you have, in the reference you have. So um, what are indeed, what are in fact, I mean, features? Uh, what are features and what are natural classes? So, uh, so far we have treated sounds as indivisible elements. That is to say, elements that cannot be still parsed into smaller units, into smaller units. So then, uh, the, cl the classification of uh, all sounds that we have considered in the first file suggest suggests that each sound is composed of a set of articulatory properties, technically called features. Huh? It is composed, each sound is composed of a set of articulatory properties, technically called features. Huh? So, the labels that have been used to categorize sounds stand for activities or gestures either present in, uh, present or absent from the articulatory setting of those sounds. So, uh, phonetically speaking, we dealt uh, uh, with sounds, we dealt with sounds uh, so uh, we dealt with the proper articulation or pronunciation of sounds, that is to say the activities or gestures which are involved in their articulation, in their articulation. For example, when we say voice, it means that here, I mean, the, the, the organs that we would be involved uh, are basically the vocal cords uh, or the vocal folds and we will have a kind of vibration. So if this vibration is present, if it is present as in the articulation of B, but it is absent as in the articulation of P, then this indicates that uh, the features are binary basically in nature. All features, uh, let's say phonological, phonetic or Distinctive features are binary in nature in the sense that we have minus, plus or minus values for each given feature. Huh? Plus or minus values for each given feature. Okay. So when um, a feature is part of the articulatory gestures producing a sound, the value plus is used together with the feature to specify the sound. For instance, in the case of B, we would claim that B is plus voiced, whereas P is minus voiced, so that the value minus indicates the absence of, I mean, the feature of voicing. It's absence. Minus means that it doesn't exist. It is absent. Whereas plus means that it is there. It is present. For instance, vocal cord vibration is part of producing B, while P is articulated without vibrating the cords. Huh? Therefore, B is a plus voice, whereas P is minus voice. So notice that, I mean, features together with their values are placed between square brackets. Huh? They are placed between square brackets. So then a key function of features is that they allow grouping sound into natural classes. Yes, that's very interesting. So uh, when we try to classify consonants, we all the time say that certain consonants uh, I mean, uh, or sounds in general, be they consonants or vowels, they form families, huh? they form families. So a key function of features is that they group, I mean, sounds into natural classes. So then what is a natural class indeed? A natural class is that when two or more sounds share some phonetic features, they are said to make up a natural class. So if we consider, I mean, the sounds P and B, 
uh, they are part of the same natural class that is called, uh, I mean, uh, bilabial stops. They belong to bilabial stops. Huh? They belong to bilabial stops. Uh, if we consider, I mean, uh, the, the consonant T, it cannot belong to this same natural class, which means that it cannot share with the P and B their natural class, because though it is a stop, Though its manner of articulation is, I mean, the same as P and B, place of articulation is different. It is not a bilabial sound. It is not a bilabial sound. So, the sounds constituting a natural class are phonetically similar and usually undergo the same changes. This is very important. Let me give you an example then to explain this. So we all know that uh, uh, voiceless, basically voiceless, uh, I mean stops, I mean p, t, k, voiceless stops, p, t, k, p, t, k, are aspirated. They become aspirated in certain environments, basically when they occur in the beginning of the stress syllable. And also for... A P and K when they are followed by one of the liquids L R. So then, P T K in this case would uh, I mean since they constitute one natural class, they would behave the same way. Huh? They behave the same way towards the application of certain phonological processes, like for instance the case of aspiration in English, basically. So then. Natural classes are grouped into larger patterns. Huh? I mean, uh, we do not have only, I mean, uh, small, I mean, uh, I mean, sounds within a given natural classes. We can get also larger patterns on the basis of articulation or perception, as uh, we will try to illustrate. So then... <laughs> In addition to what we'll be discussing here, I would like uh, just to draw your attention to one important uh, I mean, fact. Basically that, uh, I mean, uh, features or uh, let's say distinctive features or phonetic features or phonological features are basically, I mean, categorized into uh, three different categories. So number one is what we call, I mean, major class features, major class features features. Number two is uh, place features. When we say place features, it means that we are basically, I mean, referring to, I mean, uh, place of articulation features. And the last class is that of manner features. Here we are referring, basically, we'll be referring to manner of articulation of sounds. Okay? So to begin with major class features. So if they are called major class features, it's uh, because of the fact that they, I mean, um, a group, uh, I mean, uh, sounds into uh, major classes. They group sounds into major, I mean, classes. So that we have three major class features. We have uh, syllabic, consonantal, and sonorant syllabic consonantal and sonorant so let me begin with the feature syllabic then huh? i'd like to begin with the feature syllabic so it's clear from i mean the 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 the, the label from this label or from this term that this basically i mean has to do with the function that a sound plays in i mean syllable structure the function that it plays in syllable structure. So if we consider, for instance, vowels, we find that vowels are, I mean, uh, they constitute, I mean, syllabic peaks. They are the peak or the core of syllables. They are the core of syllables. So that we claim that, uh, I mean, all vowels, in which case we will be claiming that all vowels are plus syllabic. And all consonants are minus syllabic. So you have to pay attention to this. Let me repeat. All vowels without exception are plus syllabic. 
and all consonants are minus syllabic all consonants are minus syllabic however in certain languages we may have certain consonants behaving like vowels huh we may have certain consonants behaving like vowels for instance we have i mean in english you will find that nasals and liquids may function as being syllabic consonants in which case and when we claim that they are syllabic it means that they may occupy the nucleus of the syllable they may occupy the nucleus of the syllable okay is it clear this okay i should uh, i mean i I hope that it's clear so then all consonants all vowels are plus syllabic and all consonants consonants are minus syllabic except for i mean certain uh, cases in which case consonants may also turn out to be plus syllabic as the case of nasals and uh, liquids in english nasals and liquids in english language okay also we have uh, to, I mean, consider, um, I mean, uh, the um, uh, the semivowels. Yes, the semivowels. Uh, I mean, semivowels and the, I mean, laryngeal glides. This is very important. So, because we have semivowels y and w, and we also have the laryngeal glides. Uh, so, keep this in mind, please. Laryngeal glides, which are h and e uh, uh, and e uh. so let me repeat this we have the semi vowels y w and we have the laryngeal glides which are uh, and uh. so for the semi vowels for the semi vowels so you should bear in mind that these are minus syllabic minus consonantal that is to say they are not exclusively vowels as they are not completely consonants okay so they are minus syllabic minus consonantal they are not vowels and they are not consonants same thing holds true for i mean these laryngeal glides i mean uh, the glottals yeah uh, uh, the glottals uh, and uh, they are also minus syllabic minus consonantal minus syllabic minus consonantal okay so then since uh, i mean uh, semi vowels are minus syllabic minus consonantal and also i mean the laryngeal glides uh, 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 and uh, are also minus syllabic minus consonantal then uh, uh, why can't we merge why is it's not possible to merge them into one class since they are the same they have the same features no it, this is not the case and it's clear that they are separate i mean sounds what makes the difference then so we will try to answer this question by simply assuming that uh, uh, we have a, a third, I mean, uh, so far I have discussed, I mean, uh, the feature syllabic, the first major class feature, which is syllabic. And then we have the second major class feature, which is consonantal. So this, I mean, basically this, I mean, refers to, I mean, the true consonants, the true consonants. When we speak about the true consonants, so we are referring here to, I mean, obstruents. Huh? We claim true consonants or obstruents. And these are basically stops fricatives and affricates stops fricatives and affricates so all these are plus consonantal all these consonants i have just mentioned that is to say stops Afri fricatives and affricates are all plus uh, i mean consonantal minus syllabic plus consonantal minus uh, syllabic okay now the last i mean feature is the feature sonorant it is the feature sonorant so what are sonorant sounds then what are sonorant sounds then so sonorant sounds are open and sonorous sonorous that is to say they are vowel like they are vowel like produced and perceived with certain musicality uh, so this is the meaning of sonority so normally we claim that uh, i mean vowels constitute peaks of sonority 
they constitute peaks of sonority. That is to say, vowels are associated with the highest, with the highest degree of sonority. Uh, highest degree of sonority, whereas uh, voiceless stops are associated with zero degree of sonority. That is to say, they have nothing to do with the sonority. Uh, so that uh, vowels are plus sonorant, nasals and liquids are also plus sonorant, semi-vowels are also plus sonorant, whereas stops, affricates, and fricatives are minus sonorant, sonorant for the reason that they are true consonants or obstruent. We claim that they are true consonants or obstruents, okay? So uh, I hope that this is clear. To recapitulate, as I have just said, we have three major class features, syllabic, consonantal, sonorant. So for syllabic, it basically refers to the function that a uh, segment uh, I mean, have the function that a segment have in, I mean, uh, in, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, function that a syllable has in, I mean, uh, uh, um, syllable structure. So that, I mean, we know that vowels uh, uh, constitute, uh, I mean, uh, uh, nuclei of uh, syllables. And th this is the reason why all uh, vowels are plus syllabic without exception. And consonants are minus, uh, I mean, syllabic. However, as we have said, we may have certain consonants uh, being syllabic, uh, turning out to be syllabic in certain languages, like the case of liquids and nasal in English language and then we have the second feature which is consonantal and this is basically a feature that holds true for I mean uh, I mean true consonants or obstruents which are basically stops affricates and fricatives and we have uh, I mean also I mean liquids and uh, nasals are also plus consonantal but as I have explained semi vowels are minus consonantal minus syllabic as are are, I mean the laryngeal laryngeal glides which are h and uh, h and uh, okay and then we have the last I mean uh, major class feature which is uh, sonorant sonorant so this sonorant basically I mean refers to I mean uh, a kind of musicality during the articulation and perception of sounds. So vowels are all plus sonorant, liquids and nasals are also plus sonorant, v semi vowels are plus sonorant. However, what makes I mean the difference between semi vowels and uh, and laryngeal glides I mean uh and uh, uh, is that semi vowels are plus sonorant whereas the laryngeal glides are minus sonorant are minus sonorant so then um uh, so we said that semi vowels are then semi vowels are minus syllabic minus consonantal plus sonorant plus sonorant whereas the laryngeal glides laryngeal glides are mine are also minus syllabic minus consonantal and minus sonorant minus sonorant and since this is the case we claim that uh, semi vowels are more like vowels than consonants and laryngeal glides are more like consonants than vowels okay because uh, semi vowels share i mean with vowels the facts of being sonorant and laryngeal glides share with true consonants or obstruents the facts of being minus uh, sonorant okay now i mean the work the the the, the i mean the, the reference is also i mean uh, making reference to another feature which is coronal so coronal sounds are produced with the tip of the tongue as an active articulator alveolars and palato alveolars in english are coronal sounds for instance this is basically a place feature huh? it is a place feature 
interior interior it's now that i'm in uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, place feature and interior sounds are produced in the front parts of the vocal tract in the region extending from the lips to the alveolar ridge so alveolars you have to keep this bear this in mind and pay attention to this alveolars are plus anterior bilabials are plus uh, anterior and labiodental are plus anterior okay then the sounds belonging to the same natural class also undergo the same change in specific environments and i have given you i mean the case of uh, aspiration i have said that uh, i mean uh, voiceless stops per take are basically aspirated when they occur in the beginning of the stressed syllable or when they are preceded by i mean uh, one of the liquids l or r so another example uh, in American English, basically, uh, consonantal sonorants, that is to say liquids and nasals, have a syllabic function. And this is what I have just said. They may turn to be syllabic following a consonant word finally. Following a consonant word finally. For instance, you have little. Huh? You have little. Little. Huh? So, uh, bottom. Uh, you have bottom and um, you have button respectively these sounds are also devoiced i mean they lose vocal tri a chord vibration when they immediately follow a voiceless sound uh, for example le, ra, m, n, are pronounced as voiceless uh, in split press smith and sneak respectively okay uh, and this is the end i mean of this file that is dealing with uh, i mean uh, phonetics so this file has basically introduced you to the discipline of uh, phonetics you should have learned that there are three branches uh, of phonetics or sub branches as you like acoustic phonetics auditory phonetics and articulatory phonetics and I will explain them in detail we dealt with them basically in class in detail so speech sounds fall into two categories vowels and consonants they are either oral or nasal and voiced or voiceless consonants are classified in terms of their manner of articulation and uh, plus of articulation and voicing as we illustrated before vowels are described and classified mainly in terms of the parameters of uh, vowel height basically referring to whether a vowel is high mid or low in terms of vowel backness that is to say whether a vowel is front central or back and in terms of round whether uh, this vowel is rounded or unrounded okay so uh, we spoke about uh, having uh, according to daniel jones uh, who i mean tried to categorize uh, i mean vowels into primary cardinal vowels and secondary cardinal vowels and these are considered as reference points in describing vowels and you, you still have to keep in mind that uh, this varies from one i mean uh, scholar from one linguist to another some people would opt for uh, uh, jones uh, uh, daniel jones i mean categorization whereas others would have i mean other um, views and other i mean characterizations or descriptions okay on an articulatory basis sounds are described in terms of phonetic features huh? so we call them phonetic features phonological features or distinctive feature uh, in french uh, they are called the très distinctive les très distinctive okay as you have just said on an articulate on an articulatory basis sounds are described in terms of phonetic features so as to specify them individually and to categorize them in natural classes i mean uh, uh, accounting for phonetic patterns in human languages 
So the descriptive and analytical tools outlined in this file will be used to analyze the sound organization of individual languages in the files uh, that come after, that is to say, basically in two and four. Then as a last point, it is said that if you have mastered the material in this file, you should be able to do the following. You should be able to classify speech sounds in terms of points of articulation, manner of articulation, and phonation. You should also be able to name the articulatory gestures humans use to produce speech. You should also be able to use the IPA symbols to represent sounds. You should also be able to group speech sounds into natural classes. You should also be able to translate sounds into their corresponding features and vice versa. Okay, as I told you before, uh, you have to, I mean, consider, I mean, the, the charts you have on page 31 and 32 because they are of uh, paramount importance since they do classify consonants in terms of their ma place, manner, and voicing as, I mean, they do classify, I mean, the common vowels we spoke about before into also i mean uh, uh, different i mean uh, uh, i mean categories huh? and this is end i mean uh, of the file dealing with the uh, phonetics dealing with the phonetics okay